right up there with the top. So thank you so much. I would like to bring up, we have um, the guest speakers that we're going to hear next are speakers who have been uh, either waiting for a transplant or who have survived and, as Mr. Cuffer. So I'm going to ask, uh, before I do that, I want to recognize Mr. Cuffer, who is our incredible IT guy who got us connected with the internet. Mr. Hanu, thank you so much. Um, Mr. Cuffer, would you mind please coming up uh, and speaking a bit about what has happened? Good afternoon, I guess, by now. Uh, anyways, uh, first of all, I'd, uh, I'd too like to, to thank Aurora High for, for uh, sponsoring or, or hosting the event today. Um, I know some of you, through my children, who both uh, attend school here, Blair uh, Cuthbert and Marla Borton. Um, I also uh, attended school here, but that was quite a while ago. Uh, in fact, I attended at the same time as Mr. Berger. Um, what I'd like to do today is, is just encourage you to, to come forward and people who are 16 and over can sign the organ donor card and become registered for cadaveric donation. Um, the other option is, uh, is to be a live donor, but that cannot be affected until you're 18. Uh, just to give you a little background on my situation, um, I was diagnosed with liver disease uh, about two and a half years ago. At that time they told me I had uh, literally three months to live. Um, I told them I wasn't going to die and I didn't really listen to them. I should warn you, forewarn you, that uh, I get a little emotional talking about this, so um, be prepared. Um, they told me uh, I was going to die. I ended up in the hospital from uh, October till June, uh, October 2008 till June 2009. Um, I went from 180 pounds to 144 pounds and to the point where I almost couldn't walk. I got out of the hospital last June a year ago, June, and uh, uh, was back in 12 times, uh, or maybe more than 12, in, from uh, June 09 to June 2010. At that time, um, I was told I literally had days to live, and I had several bouts of, of hepatic enthalopathy, I think that's how you say it, which is uh, too much ammonia in your system because your liver doesn't clear the toxins and goes to your brain, uh, causes confusion and, and uh, temporary dementia, which you can actually die from. I had seven bouts of that. The varices vein in my neck first twice, uh, which you can bleed to death from. I had a steph infection. Um, I had different times when my blood pressure went low. Um, it was a, 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 real, uh, a real tough go. Uh, I tried to remain positive throughout the whole thing, and, and I had great support from my family. In June, um, when they told me I had days to live, I had been told by doctors I would never, when I really started, I'd never make the weight on the transplant list, and I would die before I got an organ. So in June, when they told me I had days, um, I decided I'd, I better take hand, uh, things into my own hands. I contacted Frank Cleese because I knew he had a private member's bill before the legislature and, and seeking out help. Uh, he referred me to George in Step by Step. And George organized a, a mini campaign uh, in which my kids uh, and their friends from Aurora High um, walked from Richmond Hill to Toronto carrying the torch. Down in Toronto, they had a press conference which was picked up by the Toronto media, it was on three TV stations, it was on a radio station and three newspapers. Um, they put a plague for people to come forward and, and be live donors to donate a portion of their liver. Took that footage and put it on Facebook, um, YouTube, and uh, it spread like wildfire. I had nine people contact me through Facebook uh, wanting to, to uh, step forward and, and make a donation of their, their liver. The liver rejuvenates, so people can donate their liver as a live donor and uh, stay alive and continue on with their home. Um, three of the people backed out because family members uh, weren't okay with it and uh, part of the, the, the deal with the, the, the donor is that uh, you go through different testing. One of them is, is family compatibility. And so three of them backed out for that reason. Four of them went through the procedure and uh, were rejected because they either had health issues that conflicted with, with myself or they, um, the liver dimensions weren't proper. We were on the fifth transplant, uh, the fifth potential transplant person when um, I got a second call from the Toronto General Hospital for cadaveric liver. I um, was, was optimistic but uh, realistic. I had already been called in July um, 
about a month after I was told I had days to live. And I got down there and uh, got prepped the night before. Couldn't sleep that day, that night, because I just kept thinking about how great it would be to live. I got up in the morning and uh, they, um, they never came for me. So about two hours after the designated time, I asked what was going on. They told me, sorry, didn't anyone tell you? But the liver's disease, you'll have to go home. So that was, a, to say the least, a bit of a bummer. In July, uh, sorry, in September, I actually got uh, a transplant, September 11th. Another reason for me to remember 9-11. Um, so that was less than three months ago, three months on Saturday, I guess. Um, I have, I'm doing great in my recovery, and um, it's not only how it affected me that really, really hit home, it was how it affected my kids. Um, they would come and visit me, and uh, all the time. In fact, they made a collage for me in June of um, family photos, put to music, because they didn't think I was coming out. Um, after uh, I uh, had the transplant, my daughter Marla told me that they came too often. They didn't think they get to see me again. Um, I saw the tool it took on them, the emotional um, strain of it, the trauma it caused them. In fact, um, they're to the point now where they just want to put those two and a half years behind them and just move on. But they're wonderful kids and it wasn't for them. Uh, and step by step, I wouldn't be here today. Um, the thing about organ donation is I became acutely aware during this process um, of waiting for a liver and the, the uncertainty of, of, of living and, the, and, the, and the, the challenges of going from day to day with different things happening to you and wondering if you'd be able to get up the next day or what you're going to do that day if, you, if you've got enough strength to do it and, and, and the, the cloud hanging over your head. The thing you have to do is, is, is remain positive. And I, I watched my kids go through this. And it's not just the effect it has on you, it's the effect it has on your family. And it's uh, a very um, disheartening experience to see your kids suffering along with you and your friends. I had tremendous support, and a lot of people might not have the support I did, which makes it even more important that people come forward and donate organs so that they alone do not have to go through this. Um, the, uh, the end result is very positive, but along the way, um, there were people on my floor that actually passed away waiting for an organ. Um, people die in Canada pretty well every day waiting for an organ. And the problem could be solved um, if more organ donors came forward. And the thing I want you to keep in mind is that even though directly it may not, uh, you may not uh, know who you gave your organ to, but someday it could help save the life of someone you know. Just encouraging other people to donate makes, makes more um, organs available for, for transplant. And people wouldn't have to wait on the list and, and go through the, the personal trauma and, and watch the emotional uh, impact that it has on family members. So the, the life you, you, you're saving may be that of somebody else. Um, as George says, we uh, tell people not to take their organs to heaven because God knows we need them here. Once you're deceased, um, those organs uh, can save uh, uh, up to eight lives, enhance the lives of 70, 75 other people, whether it be their eyes, their bones, the tissues, all that type of thing um, is, is used in, in transplant operations to improve people's lives and your major organs, heart, lungs, kidney, liver, and so on, um, they, they can actually give life to somebody. So I'd just like to wrap up by once again saying how proud of my children I am and by encouraging you all to step forward and, and register to donate organs and to encourage your parents when you go home to do the same thing. You can visit the, the website stepbystep.ca and gain more information as George said to register. So thank you very much and thank you Mrs. Denemey and, and uh, thank you all.